morning, everyone. Welcome to church. If you're in the lobby, we would love to have you come over for our worship time. Let's lift him up this morning. Can we clap our hands? a grateful heart for the things you've done. I come to you, giving all my praise for this day you've made. You're amazing, forever reigning, my God. There's no one like you, none beside you, my God. Come on, we sing everywhere. to live too high. I come to you every night and day. Lord, to give you praise. You're amazing, forever reigning. My God, my God. There's no one like you, none beside you. My God, everywhere I Let us bow at his feet. 
Continue into worship. Uh, I just want to remind you of just how much the Lord appreciates our worship. He doesn't need it, but He wants it. He wants that connection with us. And um, He's got all the glory, all the honor in the world, and yet He still desires to have that with us. He still desires that. So as we sing, uh, let's just be reminded of how loved we are how cherished we are, and how much he just wants that connection with us. So can we just lift up our hands to him as a sign of surrender, as a sign of a desire for connection with him? Oh, we lift you up, Lord. We praise you just out of your own mouth. Just sing to him. I want you, Lord. Oh, 
tried so hard to see it Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every
generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who have gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. We'll sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name, it stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and dominions. Your name, it stands above. your voice to clear the
the Lord reminded me that he is concerned about my heart. And as you came in this morning, let me tell you that God is concerned about your heart. You know, the Bible says that he doesn't look at the outward appearance of man, but that he looks at your heart. Let me tell you why that's so important. Your heart reveals two things. It reveals your past and it reveals your future. You know, Jesus said this. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, man's mouth speaks. And James says this. He said, what your mouth says, your life is going to do. So when God's looking at your heart, he's saying, oh, what's in your heart, that's what your future looks like. That's what your future looks like. So this morning, I want to do something a little different. I want to just pray over you guys. Lord, you see all of our hearts, God. Lord, you said that you don't look at the outward appearance, but you look at our heart. You see every heart in this room. You see every heart online. Lord, I declare right now, Lord, that you don't look at our hearts with condemnation, Lord. Oh, but you look at them with a nurturing, fatherly love. I speak to bitterness that has been wound up in people's hearts, and I declare bitterness you have no place in this congregation. You be removed in Jesus' name. I speak to fear. Fear that has held people's hearts back from doing the things you've called them to do. I declare you be removed. You have no place in the heart of, the heart of this congregation. We are children of God. I speak to deep, deep hurts. And I declare healing in your heart this morning. Healing in your heart. Lord, do a work in our hearts. Lord, Lord, I open my heart to you this morning. God, would you look at it? Would you see what needs to be pulled out? That you would replace it, God, with your love and your kindness. Lord, I just declare over this congregation things that have been in the heart, things that we brought in here today inside of our hearts that are not aligned with your word, not aligned with your calling, we rebuke it. We declare you leave here. You, re you be removed in Jesus' name. Church, would you pray with me this morning? There's something powerful about when you speak. And would you pray with me? Would you say this prayer with me? Lord, I open my heart to you. I declare that my heart is fresh ground would you plant something in me that would take deep root and not only change my life forever but change the lives of people around me forever declare this in the name of Jesus I tell you what now we're going to sing that again. Would you mind leading us through that again? Now that we've said, Lord, I opened my heart. Now we're going to declare this morning that he is holy. That he is holy. Thank you, Lord. Would you be blessed this morning by our worship of you, Lord? We declare that you are holy, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would give us, God, new vision today, 
new, a fresh vision on life, Lord, a fresh take on your word this morning, God. We declare this, we welcome you, Spirit of God. We declare the Spirit of God is alive in this place, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, I'll tell you what, I could worship here all day with you all. Thank you, worship team. You guys are amazing. Sometimes I sit here and I'm like, I am, is, are there angels behind me? Because you guys all sound amazing. Seriously, it, it is amazing. So um, would you do this? Before you're seated, would you tell somebody hi and give them a big Coastlands Life hug if you're into that thing? Because we are. Kids, you are all dismissed. Youth, you are also dismissed. Well, you were all giving out big hugs in just a few seconds here. We're going to have a video come on the screens. I invite all of you guys to give your attention up here to this video this morning. That's right. You are welcome here. We're glad that you're here today. And um, if you're here for the first time, we want to extend a special welcome for you. And at the end, we have a gift for you, too, um, through those exit doors, which we'll let you know at the end of the service. But we're so glad that you're here today. Um, my name is Pastor Elisa, and I am married to the Australian man who's going to be up here coming up soon. Um, but you will find um, that you will have sat on one of these cards, possibly, or put it on the floor, maybe. Um, and if you could grab that, and if you're a regular with us, just put your name and your email address. And if it's your first time here, we would love for you to fill that out and just pop it in the offering basket as it goes by. Your details are yours. They're private. We don't give them to anybody. So the other thing, though, that we will do is if you do have a prayer request or a praise report, we do have a team of people that pray for you like they would pray for their own mother or their own family or their own kids because that's how we pray. We, you know, we bear one another's burdens and we celebrate when God does great things. And so we have a team of people that want to fight for you and your answered prayer. OK, so go ahead and fill that out as well um, if you need prayer and um, we want to join with you on that, which will be really good. OK, so what do we have happening in church, lots. I'm still recovering from last week. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I actually did the bounce house and one time and I couldn't move the next day. That goes to show how fit I am. Yes. And Gina kicked my bahooty on that thing. I would, she was so far ahead of me on that. So yeah, well done, Gina. I knew she would. She goes to the gym. I do not. So, yes, for me, like, I go to the mailbox, and the next day, I'm like, whew, went all the way to the mailbox. That was, a, that was a big one. So, yes, that was a reminder for me that I need to move a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, okay, so we have our Young Adults Worship Night coming up, I think it's this week. Is that correct, Carly? So, Carly, raise your hand if you would like to go to that. Um, she has a fruit roll-up right now hanging out of her mouth as we speak, which is why she is one of our youth leaders. Perfect. Like, just exactly, just be you, continue. She's raising her hand going. <laughs> that was awesome. Love it. Carly. Perfect. Be you. <laughs> so anyway, just see her um, if you'd like to go to that. And it's at Van Nuys um, at the church of their church on the way. Is it still called that? Church on the way? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. So there it is right there. Um, that's going to be an amazing time. Summer camp. Youth. They're all outside. So none of them are hearing this. But the parents, you're the one who's paying for it. And you're the one who's probably going to register them. So this is more for you than it is for them. But summer camp. Registration is open, and it is July 12th through the 16th. So mark that down, um, and if you want to register, I think you have to pay to register maybe like $5, or, yeah, you just put the $5 to get their spot, and then I think the final payment is due June June 21st before you get, it's 320 after um, after June 21st. So go ahead and register your students, your child, they're not children. Youth are not children. They are students. Um, but uh, again, see Carly or Brian and Debbie. There they are right behind. So there's a group. You don't want to register them by themselves or they'll be in some cabin like way out in the bo boonies all by themselves with the crickets going, well, I want to be with the group. So there is a group. So you need to register with the group. It'll probably be Coastlands Life Church, I'm assuming, or a name that they'll figure out. So Brian and Debbie Carly, see them, and, um, and they're going to help you with that. And then the other thing that I just want to share, Gareth is actually going to be showing a trailer at the beginning of when he shares. But we have what's called life groups. And they're called life groups because we believe that that's a place when you, what we call getting sticky. When you come to church, if you just show up, you sit down, and then you leave, and you form no relationships, and you're not getting sticky and rubbing shoulders and being part of what we call a church life, church family, you're missing out. And so we want to encourage you, go to a life group, and um, you can find out more. You can talk to Gareth about life groups, and uh, these are great opportunities. How many of you run a life group in your house? Okay, we've got Janice over there. Who else? Yep. We, uh, we've got, who else? Is there, um, there's, yep, in the back, Sandy, yep. Phil and Connie, we've got a few going on. Brian and Debbie do a youth one. So, you know, if you, no, I'm not, I was going to say if you identify as a youth, but we, we're not going to say that because it's inappropriate. But yeah, that was in my mind. But anyway, I do. I'm like forever 30. So that's just the way it's going to be. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My husband's like, yeah, bring that on. Um, so anyway, life groups are great. We want you to be a part of them. It's a great way to meet people, great way to um, just be a part of the church. So it's going to be good. All right, I want to uh, transition um, and encourage you in your giving today. So would it be okay if I be like brutally transparent and honest with you about something that happened to me this week? Is that okay? My husband's going, oh, dear Jesus, what is she going to share? <laughs> I am. I'm going to be honest and transparent about something that happened to me this week that I, I had to struggle with. So my mom and dad came. I don't know if any of you met them last week, but they came and, and visited for a couple of um, days. My daughter had her senior recital, and she performed her little heart out. Good job, Savannah. It was amazing. If you were there, you saw it online. And uh, she was the one leading worship. Um, anyway, so um, we we hung out, and one of the nights we went to the mall, the Brea Mall together, and, um, you know, my parents live in Iowa, so the malls there are just pretty much corn. That's, pr that's all, like, that's all there is, not really, but they're tiny, and so my mom was like, I want to go to a California mall, and, and so we went to the Brea Mall. So we're at the Brea Mall, and we parked in the car park, and we walked in, and we were going through Nordstrom, and we're walking around and, and looking at all the things, and there's this jacket. Oh, my gosh. It was so cute. And, like, it was calling my name. It was, like, it was, it just, it had these little cute sleeves, and it had, like, this lace around it, which is funny because it's kind of a little bit sort of like this one, but not quite the same. 
And, but it was just, and it had pants that, or they were like jeans, and it was like, they flared, and they had like lace on the bottom, and I'm just like, oh, so cute. And then I looked at the price tag. It was, the just the jacket was like $395. And I was like, oh. And do you know what? Can I just tell you in that moment, I kind of got ticked off. Like I, I did, I'm like, you know what? I've done seven years of college. Like, I should be able to afford this jacket. And I, and I kind of, like, for a minute, I was like, you know what, Lord? I'm kind of ticked off at you. Like, I really, I, I had a moment. I did, I'm not going to lie. My flesh was like, I, you know, like, I have the skills that if I was in the corporate world, I would earn six figures. I just, I, I have those skills, right? And so I just had a moment. And I was like, I want this jacket. You know, I just, I was kind of ticked, right? I'm just telling, I'm just being honest with you. Some of you are like, Pastor, really? You? Your flesh was battling with you? Yeah, it was. And so here's the thing. Like, you know, that was that. We went away. And then I saw some, I'm like, that's cute too. I'm like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of Nordstrom. This is dangerous. I need to go to Savers where I love to shop and thrift, thrift shopping. This jacket was 15 bucks. Totally is so cute, right? Okay, anyway. So I just, I needed a process with the Lord. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what happened there? Let's just talk about this for a minute. And I, here's the thing that I love about the Lord. Do you know what he didn't say to me? You should be grateful. You should be grateful. Look at what you have. I've given you so much and you really want to get all attitude about a jacket because you feel like you're sacrificing. Do you know that he didn't do that? He didn't say that to me. You know what, he, you know what I felt in my spirit that the Lord said? I appreciate all you've given up. All that you've sacrificed. And then started showing me things. Remember when you did that? I saw that. Remember when you sacrificed that? Nobody saw it. I saw it. And that's the love of God that we have. He doesn't beat us over the head and say, why don't you give more? Why aren't you tithing? Why aren't you doing what you should be doing? That's not what he does. He goes, thank you for what you have sacrificed. It means so much to me. And then the scripture came to mind. It was like the Lord gave me this scripture, and I want to read it to you. It says this, and everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. The Lord's like, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. You know, and honestly, like, at the end of the day, it's a jacket. <laughs> I have kind of one just like it. <laughs> and I wore it today because it's sort of similar, right? But I think we can have these battles. We can have these things where, like, Lord, why did you, I gave this for you, and now I'm not seeing the fruit or what? He's so caring. He cares so much for us. And he's not in heaven maybe like a natural father or maybe a natural person would be just beating you over the head going, how dare you think that way? Do you know that the Lord is so secure? He can handle your, why? Why? I don't understand. God can handle it. And he's so good that he'll explain and he'll love us through it to walk through it. And so can I encourage you? He sees your sacrifice. You need to be reminded of that today. He sees it. He sees your sacrifice. He sees the fact that you wanted to stay in bed today, but you didn't. You got out, and you showered, and you got your coffee, and you came. He sees it. So can I encourage you to remember all that you sacrifice? It's not in vain. It's not in vain. He sees it. Amen? Amen. So I want to tell you a few ways if you want to continue to to give and tithe and um, and by the way your giving does not go so that I can buy a $400 jacket <laughs> um, here's different ways that you can give so you can go to coastlandslifechurch.com and, and you can give through um, that way you can do it in service today or you can mail if you're online you can mail it to P.O. Box 808 Seal Beach. The other thing that we do is we are a part of Foursquare Missions, and so there's people sent all over the world, and we get to support them financially and help them to sow into other countries and seeing people saved and make disciples. So today as well, um, if you'd like to give to missions so that we can 
partner with Foursquare, and 100% of what you give to missions all goes to the missions field, which is amazing. So can I pray for you? Lord, thank you for just the way that you love us, that when we have little attitudes or when we get frustrated or when we feel like it's not fair, you're so caring. (laughs) You're so good. That's the heart. That's the heart of God. That's your heart. And Lord, we thank you for this. Lord, for every faithful person who tithes, who gives 10%, of what comes in, Lord, we thank you for their faithfulness, and your word says that you will bless those who give up whatever it is for you, Lord, and we thank you. We love you, and it is such a privilege to give to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, ushers. And with that, Gareth, why don't you come on up? You guys are in for a treat today. I'm excited. Well, good morning, church, and uh, it's wonderful to be together with you here today, and you are in for a treat because there's some special, special things we're going to be doing between now and the close of service that I believe are going to transform some people here today, and if you're watching online, we're just so glad you're with us today. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you just as much as you watch Uh, right where you're at, and I believe one of the men who came along uh, to our men's retreat, he uh, told me that he was going to be watching today with his family, Gabriel. Um, Some of these people haven't met you, but we got to meet you, and we just think the world of you, and be blessed as you're there in Phoenix, and Jack, uh, be be blessed as well. We, We just came back from this men's retreat, and... I tell you something, can I just tell you, so many of the men, when I finally get to chat with them and really get down to where they're at, so many men these days are discouraged. So many men are lonely. The connection isn't there like they used to have it. And I tell you something, every man, when we got away from our regular circumstance and got together, got before the Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord showed up and instilled fresh vision in us. And I'm telling you, you're going to hear from the men today because I know you're saying, I'm looking forward to you preaching the word, Pastor. You're going to hear it, but the men are going to give testimony of what the Lord did. At the men. We said, we're going to bring it back. We don't want to leave it on the mountain, amen? And I know a lot of you ladies have been saying, I've been calling out for revival in our men. Uh, I know because you love us and you care for us. And uh, so your prayers have been answered so you can pray about something else now, all right? Um, but I'm telling you, we had so much fun. We, we laughed, we cried, we, we, we fooled around. We, we went and wrestled bears in the woods, and it was awesome. And uh, not quite. We thought that we saw some bear tracks, and I was like, don't worry, we've all just put on weight. I think those are our tracks right now. <laughs> we, we ate like kings, let me tell you. Jack came. See, here's what, what's amazing about Jack. Jack was with, Jack and Diane were part of our church. They moved to Phoenix. And I just thought, you know what? Wouldn't it be awesome to have Jack come back and cater this thing? Because he's amazing at catering. So I was like, hey, Jack. Called him up. Messaged him. Jack, any chance you could come to our amazing men's retreat we got? And not only are you going to be blessed by riding your motorbike all the way over here, you're going to feed us. He goes, yeah, I'm there. And he came, I'm telling you, that guy's incredible. And he just loved it. And he brought his friend Gabriel. And we just had so much fun. Here's what was awesome. Listen to me. When you're in the presence of God, everything changes. When you're in the presence of God, nothing is impossible. He says, listen, with man, it is impossible. So if your opinion on that thing lately is, oh, it is absolutely impossible. The Lord agrees with you, but that's not the end of the verse. He says, listen, with man, it's impossible. But with God, how many of you are with God? But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And here's the coolest thing about the cross, is the with God has now become incredibly easy. 
In fact, people will kick themselves for eternity when they finally realize, what, I didn't say yes to that. So easy to connect with Jesus. And then once you do connect with Jesus, you realize he's not about shaming me, guilting me, pushing me down, making me serve a whole bunch of rules. So finally, he jumped through all those hoops on the cross. The world has lied to, to people. I'm telling you, saying don't go anywhere near that Jesus stuff. I tell you, it's not Jesus stuff. He's a person and he's here today. He's with us. He said, I'll be with you when you gather. And so as the men uh, share things, be blessed. But one thing I do want to do prior to that is, is one of our precious men has gone to be with Jesus. And one of the men I think who's been the great, one of the greatest supports I've had, I've had some men come around me. You know, when we went through COVID and the church just couldn't gather, one of the, I had a lot of you guys were pillars in this church and supports. And, and one of those pillars was David Zizabi. And David has gone to be with Jesus. And so, and I'm just so thankful, Kathy, that you're here today with your two precious sons, your grandchild there. And I just want to tell you, family, I may not know you that well, but you are family. And whatever you need in this time, we're there for you. And Kathy, the Lord tells us to look after the widows, and we are going to look after you. I know your family too. And we're going to pray over that because we need resource. Whatever it is, love, support, finances, decision making. But may all that pressure come off of you in Jesus' name. As you mourn David's loss, we mourn with you. And I thank you, Lord, that you brought David our way. And your word says we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, Lord. So I don't know, I'm hoping he can, that he's able to get to see us honor him today and and in a few weeks on as we have his memorial service right there on the battleship Iowa there as the world mourns differently to us Lord may this time of mourning also as weird as it sounds has a has a strong component of celebration of what he is now experiencing. And I pray right now you would bless Kathy, you would strengthen her and strengthen those around her, provide everything she needs, the finances she needs, the decision-making, Lord. I pray that she'll look back and say, what a testimony, the Lord helped me in every step of this journey. Help us to be there for her as a church. We're not a church service, Lord. We're a church family. And help us to be there as a church family for her. And Lord, please tell David we love him. I know you will. And I know your word says, absent from the body, present with the Lord, instantaneous. There's no distance. And you said also, that there'll be no more sorrow. And we watched him fight, Lord. Courageous man. And I watched him also be the strongest in his walk with you in his latter years. On the increase, on the increase. May that be, may that be my pattern too. We learned from him to be ever on the increase in our pursuit of you. And that's what he did. And then you told us, you're going to say this, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. And those of us who just stare at this life and say that's all there is, oh, may we switch our focus to eternity and what David is now experiencing. As we mourn differently, yes, it hurts. Yes, there is a big gap right now. But would you come and fill it right now? In our weakness, we're made strong. 
And I pray all of this, Lord. Last thing I say is thank you that David was born and lived his life. And part of it was shared with us. And then in his passing, we also have this comfort. We will see him again and soon in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ha, ha, praise the Lord. It's part of life, isn't it? And um, yeah, may I be more like him. It's one of my heroes. One of my heroes, Kathy, was David, you know. So I did felt something, um, and I believe that Roseanne and Samantha may be watching. And I hope this isn't inappropriate, but I just felt the Holy Spirit say it that we haven't forgotten you, Roseanne and Samantha. God hasn't forgotten you. And at the exact same time, we did have a lot of people come down with these real difficulties in their health. And I, like I said, I hope it's not inappropriate for me to mention, but I just felt a stirring from the Holy Spirit to say, Roseanne and Samantha, you have your own journey. And God's not done with you. And he's about to do a miracle. And yes, David experienced the ultimate miracle. And we prayed for a miracle. So God gives the answer. But he does say, every prayer I will answer. Amen? And so we, while there is breath in every person's lungs, we never stop praying. We're calling in a miracle for you in Jesus' name. Cancer has to bow to the name of Jesus. And so would you just reach your hand up like you're, like you're laying hands on the sick because we can't get to them right now. Your word says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Roseanne and Samantha, we're calling you in. We will see you in service. We're calling you in. We're calling you in for healing. We're speaking breakthrough and miracle in Jesus' name. Your word says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in Jesus' name. And I know that Sandy was here a few minutes ago and felt I'm going to rush over there and sit with her while service is on. So Sandy, as you're there with her, lay hands on her. And it's like we're there with you. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Samantha, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And I pray a surge of strength rush through you and a fresh excitement of healing. Yes, right at the very end of what we can do, that is what, where the Lord begins. So no matter how you're feeling, as I've been on death's door myself, no matter how you're feeling, in the name of Jesus, rise up and be healed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I was a little uncomfortable doing that right after talking about David, but I just felt the Holy Spirit say to do it, so I have to obey. Praise the Lord. So, a um, little hard to transition from these things into other parts of the service. Um, but like I said, that's part of life. We're not, a, we're not looking for some slick church, church service today. Amen. What we're looking for is to connect with the Lord. Because the Lord, you've got to realize church service isn't like life. Life is messy. So if our church service is a little messy today, that's okay, right? And thank goodness the Lord doesn't go, you know what? When you guys all clean yourselves up, that's when I come on in. He goes, I'm right there with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That means you go down, I'll go right down with you. You're in the dumps right now. I'm right there with you. I'll bring you up, though. He, he never says, I'll leave you there, though, does he? He never says, I'll leave you there. That's one thing I've found about Jesus. So a couple of things. One is right now we've really taken the pressure off Kathy with life groups running, though she's at the same time been messaging me with the ideas, and I'm like, Kathy, you know. And, of course, Hannah right now, of course, the, who is co-leading with Kathy, who's also going through stuff right now. And she's not here today because she's going through a tough time with her back, really bad. She's not here today, right? Yeah. So um, I'm going to pray again. <laughs> and I don't know if you've got, has anyone got stuff going on in your body and needs healing today? You got stuff going on in your body and needs healing? We're going to pray over Hannah. Um, 
and, uh, and pray over you. So, Lord, right now you see those hands that went up. And you spoke a universe into being. So, and you said, let us make man in our own image. You decided how this thing was going to be made. And you made it in perfection. Because sin entered this world, so did death. But you came and answered that. Put the ultimate answer in your son and dying on the cross. Not just for our eternity, but also by, by your stripes we're healed. So we now have access to the healing power of God Almighty through the name of Jesus because of his blood that was shed. And in the name of Jesus, we speak, Hannah, be healed in Jesus' name. And Mark, as you support her, as you're one with her, and there's lots of responsibilities, we pray strength over you. And we call this in as a wonderful testimony for the Lord's glory and for your breakthrough. Hannah, Mark. Hannah, be healed in Jesus' name. And those of you who need healing in your body right now, some of you say, it's in my mind, it's in my emotions. I'm struggling with depression, with anxiety, whatever it may be. In the name of Jesus, by His stripes, you are healed. Your word also said you're going to have to dismiss the enemy. We know you could do that, but you said you love seeing us win. So in the name of Jesus, Satan, we tell you, get the heck out in Jesus' name. You get out of this church, you get away from the people in this church, you get away from their minds, you get away from their emotions, you get away from their bodies in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Christ and in the name of Jesus, we speak, be set free. In your mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. So many times, the reason why I do that is not because it's just because it's in the Word, but because the Lord has an amazing track record with you and with me. I've heard your testimonies. The amount of times, I remember the first time, Elise and I were out on a date. We just started hanging out. We go into Sydney, where I grew up in Sydney, Australia. And in George Street, it's the main city going through Sydney. They had the movie theatres there, and so sometimes you go to the local one, but also it's fun to go right into the city and watch a movie there. And so we're there on a date, and we sat down and... You know, there's the part just before the movie's going to start. You're shoving popcorn in you. <laughs> and, uh, and Elisa had a migraine come on. Really bad. And so that's the end of the night. Migraine. And I'm like, hold on a second. That's not the end of the night. That's the end of the migraine. Let's pray over that right now. And prayed over her and just said, in the name of Jesus, I tell this migraine to leave. And instantly the thing just leaves. Not hard for God. That's easy for God. Problem is, we don't pray. And you may say, well, I've been waiting until I'm perfect to start praying. He's the perfect one who died on the cross. Listen, nothing is impossible for God. You say, right now, I'm late and I need a parking spot. Pray for it. You say, right now, I'm late and getting my life right with Jesus. Pray for it. Say, Lord, get me right right now. So I don't know when you're coming back or when my heart beat that I receive right now, one day will be my last. I want to be right with Him. Pray, pray, pray. He'll answer in Jesus' name. Amen? Well, it's talking about life groups, and thank you, Kathy and Hannah, who's watching. Um, we have come, I believe, to the end of uh, a couple of our series that we've had, and life groups need a fresh one. And I do have a trailer uh, of our next life group series. You say, life groups, what's that all about? Midweek, we gather together and you can join on in. You go to our website, coastlandslifechurch.com and click on life groups and you can find one and you click contact and we'll get you in touch with them. Um, but also in service, there's people who run a life group. Put up your hand if you run a life group and it's available to you. Right now, there's a few that are not. Uh, and so we have women's groups and men's groups and uh, also our young adults and youth. Uh, Brian and Debbie, see them as well. But I'm going to show you this trailer right now and then we're going to move on to the next part of the service. Every one of us finds ourselves at war in our brains every single day. We bought this lie that we are a victim to our thoughts. We are at war. In the next six weeks, 
We're gonna look at the scriptures. You're gonna see again and again this truth that we have authority. We have a choice between chaos and quiet, between noise and solitude with God, between denial and healing. Next time you're stuck in a downward spiral of distraction, choose stillness. God knows that where we will find contentment is actually not thinking so much about ourselves. You are not helpless because God lives inside of you. He knows that we are not going to get all this right. He knows that we are not going to be perfectly holy and perfectly single-minded people all the time. Yet He died anyway. We choose to obey Him no matter how we feel. This is our mindset free. It's our upward spiral. We have a choice. We forget. The Bible doesn't call us victims. It calls us warriors. And we were built to fight the greatest battle in our generation, this battle of our minds. So some of you uh, maybe got a little discouraged when you started out with a life group. Can I encourage you? Get back into it. Get back into it in the right timing. But if, Or you may say, I want to start one of those. Uh, we'll help you. Uh, we need more of these life groups, and this is our latest series. And really what we're going to do in this one, there isn't actually a study guide that goes along with it. Um, there's going to be enough for you to discuss just by watching this. This one will work for all ages. I'm telling you, this is powerful, powerful series to really help you because the battle is in the mind. This is, there's a huge battle here. And so if you go to our website and click on Life Groups, you can scroll down and actually sign up uh, for that. And those materials are even available right there uh, for you to click on. Uh, there's a free account there for you to join in on Right Now Media which has access to all these materials. So may the Lord bless you as you connect with those. Or if the Lord's putting it on your heart to say, I'm going to start a life group, um, come and chat. We would love to help you with getting that launched. So, um, all right. You ready for our men to give testimony? I want to show you a couple of pictures um, real quick of where we were. So you can just picture where we were. And it was so much fun. There's Chris. When we first rocked up, I was like, Chris, takes me a while to settle down. Oh, he's already settled in. <laughs> and there's Chris over there. And uh, was there much food? There was, um, but not anymore. It's in us. <laughs> there was a lot of food. And so we had this, we had two cabins side by side, a uh, big one and a smaller one. And... Uh, the smaller one was just for the food storage. But, uh, but there's Jack there on the right. There's Gabriel up the back there. And, of course, all of the, a lot of the lads there that you would recognize. And you can see Paul was there. There's Artie. Um, and you can keep going. And we sat out on the back deck at times and just relaxed. And it's in such a beautiful surroundings. And, and I want to say a bit, she's not here today, a huge thank you to Shelley. Um, uh, for letting us um, use these two cabins, the Nielsen's and Eric as well. Um, and so this was the living room where we actually um, did worship and the word and also hanging out. And, and you can see, uh, you know, just a time of, I just caught that picture while no one was really looking. Uh, keep going there. There we go. Then we went on, out on a walk into the, um, up the end of their street, you just enter straight into the wilderness as I would call it, um, and it was, it was beautiful, beautiful, um, and uh, <laughs> there's Paul who did a, he became a human toboggan, I guess, he's, <laughs> yeah, and uh, oh yeah, man, we, Brandon here and, and Chris, uh, there was some jam, good jam sessions uh, went on, right, and uh, there we all are there just an amazing time and Jason right there uh, did a session on that we had four sessions and one of them Jason took and man it was such a great great encouraging message and uh, he and I shared zero notes on what we were going to speak on and it just went hand in hand with what I was speaking on and uh, there I am with Gabriel and uh, there's Jack and there's Paul. 
we swapped a lot of stories and told about our life. Most of those stories were true, but we swapped stories and, uh, and connected and laughed. And, oh, it was just so much fun. Man, if you miss this one, next time we advertise one of these, can I just tell you, do everything you can to be there. The enemy will always make sure you don't make it to one of these. He'll put everything as an obstacle to make sure you don't. Because I tell you, our men came back and we are changed. We're diff- different men, different men. And uh, I'm just so thankful to the Lord. So we can, um, there's Jack, we can just finish it there. Um, so uh, praise the Lord. So here's what I'd love to do. Uh, first thing I'm going to tell you what the theme of the messages was. And it was this. It was identifying and smashing our barriers. Identifying and smashing our barriers. And do you know what? Without grace in the picture, it's very hard to even go near barriers because barriers to what, firstly? Well, to the good life that God has promised for you and me. To the good life that God has promised. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? And there are barriers in the way to that. Barriers also to your receiving his love, to you operating in joy, to you experiencing his peace. Three of the greatest gifts he's given you, in fact, they are the greatest, is love, joy, and peace. And there can be barriers to these things that God is the provision that God has for us, the breakthroughs, the I'm hitting the ceiling lately and I just want to get to the next level, but I keep hitting the ceiling. What is it that's stopping us? Barriers. Sometimes there's nothing to do with sin, it's just barriers. And well, if the, you can't identify them, you can't smash them, right? So first we identified them, and then we smashed them. But we didn't just identify and smash. Listen, this is the most important thing. There's a catalyst you need. How many of you remember science and couldn't stand it in school? How many of you love science in school? How many of you nearly burnt down the school (laughs) using some of the things that go on in a science lab at school? Yeah, me too. They should never put that really hot Bunsen burner thing right in the middle of my desk, you know. Did you guys have that where there's a gas tap right there? I had a friend who used to turn it on and light the thing just straight out. And we're like, dude, that's what happens when the teacher leaves the classroom. Sorry about that, Cassie. (laughs) Who's a teacher? Um... When you prepare an experiment, I remember doing this in high school, you prepare it all and then nothing happens. But then you bring in a catalyst and now that science experiment does something amazing. And so we did the same thing. You can identify your barriers and you can go, I need to smash them. But most people stop, fail, get guilty, go, oh, it didn't work. You know what the catalyst for change is in our lives? Encouragement. Encouragement from the Lord. You can never, you don't, I don't even want to go near my barriers because it's embarrassing. Because it brings me guilt, brings me shame. Oh my goodness, that thing, I just want to, you know, right? But when you, the Lord is so different, he's like, listen, my grace. And my grace will lead you to the encouragement I have for you. What's encouragement? It's to Get courage that wasn't in you and add it in to encourage. I don't know what you're going through that needs courage, but as these men testify right now, you're going to hear men who might have been really discouraged before we went up. But I'm telling you, they're all like, oh, I'm ready to go back down the mountain now. And I'm taking on life like I've never taken it on before. And I tell you, that's what the Lord wants to do in you today. Look at me. He wants you to say this. Oh, life, I got you. I'm taking you on. All barriers, come on, identify them. Because I'm encouraged that he's allowed me to bring these things up. Because there's no shame or guilt with the Lord. There's just freedom. There's just breakthrough. That's what the cross represented. Is I know you can't do it on your own. So I'll come and live that for you. So that now my Holy Spirit will come. He'll encourage you. He'll lure you into my presence. And he'll love on you with his love. And then you'll see barriers. And then you'll see them smashed. You've got to realize, not only that, not only all of that, he then says, I'll smash them. Behold, I'm making crooked places straight, says the Lord. Did you notice that in his word? 
I'm making crooked places straight. So I don't know if your marriage isn't where you want it to be. That's a crooked place. I don't know if your health isn't there, your thinking, your career. Some of you are like, I just don't even think I can push anymore for this career of mine. The Lord's like, listen, I'll help you get up and out and free. Amen. So, Lord, I pray as these men just share these testimonies. I pray it be a blessing to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm going to see who of the men has the courage to say, count me in, I'm the first one up. Who's the first one up? Phil, there we go. Now, we, got, we need enough time for each one, so if you see me step forward, that means you've gone on for 50 minutes and it's time to wrap this thing up. Also, men, we need to hear you, so you have to put the microphone here. I only need a half hour, that's all. Is that right? All right. Hey, guys, all of you, come on up. We're at camp. Come up now or? Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Anyway, um, been to many men's camps, uh, uh, mostly so far in uh, Camp uh, Cedar Crest. I think some of you are familiar with that. Um, one year we had over 500 guys come in. And, boy, we had to scramble for beds and everything else, but it was something else. But I'll tell you, of all the men's camps I've been to, nothing was more powerful than what we were at this weekend. It was awesome. Right, guys? Uh, one of the things that we talked about, uh, which was part of the encouragement as well as the barriers we were facing, one uh, hindrance to facing the barriers was our tongues, our wicked tongues, as you know. And I'll paraphrase uh, Ephesians 4.29 where do not speak any foul out of your mouth, but use your tongue to encourage and edify others. That's paraphrasing, of course, but that's what we talked about quite a bit. And uh, it was awesome. And uh, I came down the mountain and Connie, stand by. I got something for you. Love it. Thank you, Phil. As so, guys, as soon as one goes down, I need the next one to jump up. Come on. There we go. Yeah, Matt. Wow. Scary. I feel like a deer in a headlight. Okay, what I gained from the experience was uh, wisdom and spiritual strength. And the best of all was I didn't get yelled at for leaving the toilet seat up. Thank you, Matt. There we go. There's Chris. Chris led us in worship a lot, and it was awesome. And, uh, yeah, go for it. Good morning, y'all. Um, yeah, it was a great experience. I had a couple doodles that I wanted to share. Did we get those? Up? Yeah, these are um, some of my doodles. So this, this is one of the things I learned. It says... When being accountable by fellowshipping with other people and sharing your stuff, you're really discussing the flesh, which is not who we are. We are, um, we are one with Jesus, and we are spirit beings, and we are made perfect. And um, so we don't have to be um, shy about that stuff because that's not us. And um, there's freedom in that. And um, I encourage you guys to get someone to share your lives with. Um, it was a beautiful time. It was fun. Uh, a lot of worship, a lot of, uh, yeah, you can move to the next doodle. I got, like, a couple that I wanted to share. These are the guys, if you recognize them, that's Matt right there. <laughs> and then we, we got Jason and uh, Phil. Oh, wow. you know, so. <laughs> yeah, I had a great time. Thank you guys for uh, inviting me to come along. So the uh, next guy, just stop a second, because really he touched on Proverbs 27, 17. Um, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And um, I noticed something um, that through the la last few years, it's been dropping more and more, is men gathering together with other men and women with women and sharing their stuff. Anything that 
is hidden is the devil's playground. And so, and then in COVID, we got so isolated and we stopped connecting at, even as a church. The enemy's rubbing his hands together. Oh, let's spoil his little party. We need to connect. We need church, but not a church service, a church family. And then you've got to not use one another, utilize one another. Utilize those friendships. When I was younger, I was dead in the water with my life, the call of God on me, career, advancing. It was all gone. And then the Lord showed me, get a mentor who's where you want to be and ask for their time. And then get a peer and walk with them. And you be a listening ear to them and they'll be a listening ear to you. And let them know your stuff and what you're struggling with, what are your highs and what are your lows, what are your victories as well. And I'm telling you, the Bible says very clearly, Proverbs, as I said, 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend in the New King James there. And really, women, you can do this too, but you, we need to connect. We need to connect. And stop being so worried that we've got mess because Chris touched on it. Part of our message was this. You remember how Jesus said, you must be born again? When you get saved, you spiritually come alive. And what you and I can't see is who you really are. Like we were talking about, when there's a coffin, that's not the person. That's just the shell they walked around in. And they utilized it the best they could. But it also messed them up every now and then and also brought them victory every now and then. But I'll tell you something. When you think that your behavior is just who you are, you'll never, ever go near any of this. But one of the greatest things, the therapist I went to when our marriage was a mess and I had all this hurt, pain. So many people are going through pain. All of us at some time going through pain, difficulties. And when it's addressed to you by a parent who maybe isn't trying their best, but there's no perfect parent, or a teacher, who corrects you. Hey, you're bad. Why are you doing that? No, that's incorrect. And I remember, Mark, can you come up here a second? I just need to do a visual. Can you come for a sec real quick? The Lord showed me this whole thing of you're bad, you're bad. You need to change that. It needs to change too. Listen, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, all things are being made new. You're perfect. Oh, but I messed up lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your behavior. Let's address that for a minute. You're perfect. Let's see it over there. That's, that's your behavior over there. That wasn't so good. That's going to mess you up if that keeps going. By the way, you're still perfect in Christ, even while that's still going on. Otherwise, what he achieved on the cross and what he tells us in his word is a lie, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Righteousness is a massive saying. It is a statement that God makes about himself and about us. It is absolute perfection because of the blood of Christ. Thank you, Mark. And that's why Chris was so impacted. Because, men, you have to realize in your mess, in your struggles, in the things where you go, I wish, oh, I hope no one ever finds out I'm struggling with pornography, which is the filth of this world. For us to look at, women being made money on, and then we look at it, it's filth. It's from the enemy. Someone has to stand up and say it's filth. But at the exact same time, there's encouragement from the Lord for these. I just brought that as an example that just brings men so low and women too. And then we gaze upon the Lord and his righteousness and we go, oh, it's so different to me. And he says, yeah, yeah, your behavior, but not you could see how I see you. I see you in perfection. That's what set me free. And it'll set you free too. And it sets Chris free. And thank you for sharing that. Amen. Next lad, come on up. Who's the next one? Ray. Hi, everybody. Um, this is probably one of the most difficult things I've ever said in my life. Um, I ask that you'll pray with me and just help me that uh, God would help me say what the Lord would say. Dear Lord, I just ask that you take me away from this and just 
we have to be more rude to people. Um, I'm going to be as transparent as I can. Growing up, I never heard the words, I love you. You know, nobody ever told me that. But my family was a good family, so I'm not putting them down or anything like that. They were great people. And we showed each other that we loved each other by just how we treated each other. But we never heard the word, I love you. And um, I had a little talk with Garrett about this. And uh, that was something that um, was very difficult to go through. But also, before I get to what I really want to say, is that um, the untamable tongue, my brethren, oh, this is uh, James 3, my brethren, that not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, also able to bridle, or bridle the whole body. Now, to me, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life of things I've said. You know? And there was a lot to learn about um, what the tongue does. And, uh, you know, I got to admit, my friend Matt over here, you know, he finds it real easy to say I love you to anybody, you know. But I really believe he, I, I really believe it's heartfelt, you know. And for me, it's just really, really been difficult. So I just want to let you all know that I really love you. You're all awesome to me. Sandra, I know she needs to hear this from me more than anybody else. I love you. Carly, I love you. I wish Cheyenne was here. She's outside, but I love her too, and I love my family. But I'm going to do the best I can to say that more often because people really need it. It just, it touched me, and I need to say it out so I can touch you. Thank you. God, see this thing ever, mate. I'm so glad we, we, we withdrew. You know, Jesus withdrew often. He, can't, he emptied himself, so you have to realize we got to see Jesus, but not as he is right now because he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. The ultimate authority there is. If ever you met the president, you go, wow, it's the president of the United States. Listen to me. He's the president of the universe. Nothing compares we're all just men and women, regardless of your office or your title. There's no titles with the Lord. You're all child of God or potential child of God. That's the title, two titles he sees. Child of God, potential child of God. And so I totally get it, right? Totally get it, mate. And the battle of what went on is in our childhoods, it's messy. And um, it's funny how I remember going to Colorado to this guy named Pete Kuyper to get therapy. Not everyone needs therapy. <laughs> I did. <laughs> we all often go and get top-up counseling, won't we? <laughs> Whether we need it or not, just go get some help. Go chat with someone who's not emotionally tied to your situation. The man who isolates himself rages against all wise judgment, the proverb says. And so I remember going, and Pete Kuyper shared a little story. As I started to go, why do I have to revisit that stuff? Because he went back and got me to revisit my childhood and the mess, the abuse, the stuff that went on when people you trust did stuff they should never have done. And like I said, it was going to be a little messy today. Um, and he told me a story about there was a guy and he was driving to work one day. And as he was driving, he had to go past a school. School buses lined up, dropping off the children. And they're all meant to go that way. But that day, one didn't go that way. He went the wrong way. And this guy was going way too fast past these school buses. He had a lot of mess in his life himself. And as he was speeding along, thinking about the meeting he had to get, go to, he felt a huge bang, sore 
something and realized I've hit a child. It's going so fast he'd moved even past the situation. Pulled over at the end of the buses and looked back and realized my life is about to change. It's been so horrible lately. It's about to get even worse. Oh my goodness. All these things that flash through your mind. And the temptation was, no one's run up to me. I can just keep going right now and just leave it all behind me. But instead, he did a U-turn and came back around and came back to the scene of what he knew was going to be carnage. And as he came back around, he looked over at the area and realized there was a log on the road. He'd just run over a log. And I tell you that story because sometimes you have to revisit the scene of the crime, the mess, the, the time when it occurred and realize Jesus was right there with you. And it was different to how you remember it because you remember it as a time that brought such guilt and shame and mess. So this is what I needed. To realize we've all gone through stuff, but listen, the Lord knows what to do with it. I don't. And, and oftentimes, those things are there accusing us still. When actually, sometimes you just revisit it, revisit it for a few minutes and you realize it was different to how I thought it was. Because that thing has not taken me out. That person that did that thing, I'm not going to let them have power over me any longer. Because if that thing, or even where the church might have messed you up. Can I just tell you, if the church messed you up, they weren't the church that day. When people go, I don't go near church because it messed me up. They weren't the church that day. Because the church is perfect in his sight. He only becomes one with something that's perfect. So they weren't being the church that day. And that person who did something against me, they weren't operating as a child of God that day. But Jesus was right there. You say, well, why would he allow me to go through these things? Listen, I don't know. But I know this, I'm closer to him today because of it as opposed to further away. You know why? Because I discovered His grace. The Lord's taking you through a very, very short journey that this life lasts, oh, it's done, like this. It's a vapor. And so if you've gone through stuff and you go, why have I gone through so much? I know, it's confusing. But I tell you something, it's not the end of your story. And if you do need to go get someone to talk to, do it. If your marriage needs someone to talk to, do it. It's the greatest thing ever. It's actually, firstly, before you step in the door, the worst thing ever, and then you get in and just start telling your stuff. Some, I encourage you to get a Christian counselor because if you don't have the eternity in mind, you're, not, you're gonna always talk about things that are physical, and that's great. Emotional, that's great. Relational. But if you don't attach the spiritual to it, the foundation is very, very different. But I tell you, the ultimate therapist is here today. You say, I never, ever want to go near a therapist's room. No worries. You're in the best one here today because Jesus is here by his spirit. So I'd love to hear from one or two others just as we close. Brandon. I went on the men's retreat a couple of years ago. And it was a great time, and I was looking forward to going on this one again. Um, if, you, if you guys don't know me, I'm Brandon. And, yeah, and um, it, it was really nice to be around other godly men in my life because I definitely don't have enough of that um, in my day-to-day -day life. So it was nice to get away from my busy schedule and just the city and, and be around the men and, and, and just feel encouraged, you know, and not alone in the struggles, you know, that we all that we all struggle with that are the flesh. Um, and one of the themes of the weekend was fresh vision, receiving fresh vision. And uh, I wrote a song about it a while ago, and I shared it with Pastor Garrett. I'm just going to share some of the, the lyrics with you. Um, it says, give me fresh vision, Lord, to see things like you do. Open up. My heart and sing, I am loved, remembering. Um, 
inspiration flow like a river. Oh, let your current wash over me, a new vision that I've been given. Oh, let my soul sing, hallelujah. The next verse is, open up my eyes anew, remove the blindfolds like you do. Help my heart to understand, be my rock and guiding hand. Um, and uh, I, I, Yeah, and I wanted to share that with you because that was a gift from God to me. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, mate. We're thankful for you. Uh, any more lads? Hey, Brian, come on up. Brian and Debbie, two of the best youth leaders going around. And I uh, got to share some time with this legend. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I got, um, there was a lot out of it. I love seeing Gabriel's perspective. Uh, am I saying that right? Gabriel, right? Yeah, I love seeing his perspective of it. That was so cool. Um, been to a lot of retreats and things, and so sometimes it can seem like, okay, this is what this should look like. Yeah, yeah. But then to see it from his perspective, who hasn't gone, and he was like, that's so cool. You guys have something really special, and that's really awesome. Cherish that. And so I thought that was neat. But um, when in the first session, uh, I don't know the scripture behind it, but we were praying to uh, basically forgive people that hurt us and just to be free from that burden. And uh, so he had us pause and was like, okay, think of a name name of a person that you need to forgive ah. see yeah thank you i needed that <laughs> all right so uh for the first name that came to mind wasn't really surprising but the second name sort of caught me a little off guard because it was mine it was like forget, you need to forgive yourself like that's gonna take some time to unpack um but Jesus forgives us. His blood covers our mess. And like I hold people accountable. I have like a really high standard. And I have a really high standard for me. And I don't meet it. And then God comes along. He's like, I forgive that. You're crazy. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> why, do you, why do you forgive that? Like, yeah, you, you need to forgive that. Because you're holding yourself in that mess. Um, like, oh, okay. All right. So that was probably the most impactful thing that I got out of it. It was amazing, just in a prayer time. Um, and then the, the second thing that I got out of that is out of 1 Samuel 30. Uh, 1 Samuel 30 is pretty incredible. David and his men were living in foreign territory. They were called out to battle. The guys that they went out to battle with said, no, 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 you guys are just going to turn on us in the middle of this because you're not part of us. So you guys leave. They take three days to get back to their home. Their homes are gone. Like their families are gone, everything's gone, and his men that are faithfully following him like pretty much turn on him. They're like, "Hey, we need to kill this guy." Um, and um, he, his response was, he took it to the Lord and he said, "What do I do? Do I go pursue these guys? Am I going to overtake them? What do I do?" And um, so his point was, you know, ask God. He's, you need to have his direction for what you do. And I was thinking about that situation, like these guys wanted to kill him, but I'll bet there was also a lot of other opinions in that mix. And it's like, okay, we're going to kill him, and then we're going to go after them. Or we're going to kill him, and then uh, what are we going to do? There's a field of opinions about what to do. And what I noticed that David did not do is he didn't just read the room. And I'm like, hey, uh, you guys are all impacted. What do we do? And then go and pursue whatever they said. Um, you can get a lot of voices. It's not up to a popular vote what to do. It is most important to go back to God and go, what do I do? And then God gave him a great answer, and he said, go do it. Um, you're going to recover it. And in the end, oh, thank you. And in the end, he, they, they caught up with them. They had the victory. Nothing was lost. Everything was recovered. And it's like, um, I love that. It's um, very important to not just read the room and, go with the popular opinion, or even pick one advisor, right? One advisor might be right every now and then, but not always. God's going to be right. you got to seek him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, did we get everyone? I think we, did we get everyone? I think we did. Jason, we didn't get you, did we? Jason, real quick, run up. I, I think you're the last one. 
And then we're going to close service, but we're going to finish with a good one right here. And your, your, your message was amazing, man. Well, I hope you guys got another hour. Uh, so I'll be fast. Uh, you, you know, Pastor Gareth on the last session talked about the power of the tongue. And, you know, I've read those scriptures and I believe in them and I meditate on, it, on them. And I, you know, stand in my prayer room and I declare things, you know. And then he went into a deeper space of, you know, our, our tongue is to, to not to curse but to bless, and I'll tell you what, what, what really hit me in that is all of, because here, here's the truth. The truth is what your tongue declares, your life follows. That is true. And all of the spaces that I need breakthrough in, I need breakthrough here. I need breakthrough there, right? I, I went and I wrote a list down of stuff I need breakthrough in. And the Lord was showing me the breakthrough is in the declaration of blessing over those things, in you beginning to talk about those things differently. And, you know, I, I, I'll even share, you know, I'll just open my list up. Um, it says, life and death are in the power of the tongue, right? And my tongue being given over to the Lord is going to equal for me and for you being advanced in my sonship, in my relationship with, with God. It's going to equal my marriage being advanced, my, f my fathering for my children being advanced, advanced in my, my career, my work, advanced in my friendships, advanced in my finances, all of the things that I go, oh, that's important, that's important, that's important, that's important. The Lord was showing me your tongue, how you use your tongue is what's going to equal advancement in those things for you. And it was a real breakthrough for me. And I was so glad to be there, so glad to be there. And I could tell you um, the other best part of the night was Chris. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm not going to embarrass you, but we had this moment where we were all praying, and it was a great moment. <laughs> and then Chris said the best thing ever, and he absolutely sealed up the night with a good vision from the Lord and a good prayer. But, oh, man, it was amazing. And I'll tell you what, men, men, just because you missed this one does not mean that you missed out. And we, uh, we're going to do this again. And as we meet, I encourage you all, please be there. Very good. Awesome. Oh, we're going to close right now. And, um, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I, the result of my life is the result of what I've done with my tongue. Last thing is this. Ready? You're either the, the boss of your tongue or your tongue's the boss of you. If you can control that thing. How big of a ship and how little of a rudder, and yet it steers that whole thing. And your tongue is steering your life. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Firstly, for salvation. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Your tongue gets you into heaven. You say, I thought Jesus did. Yes. But then the thing that he puts on you is your tongue, and what will you do with it? And then after salvation, then for breakthrough. So let's pray. Lord, thank you. As we close this service right now, we offer up our lives, our eternity, our mistakes, our past, our tongues unto you. And we say right now, would you pray this with me, Lord? Come on, everyone, let's join in. Lord, I give my life to you. I give my tongue to you, which means I give my words to you. May my words bring life. From this moment on, I'm advancing into intimacy with you, advancing into the call on my life, the reason why I'm here, why you put me here, my purpose. I grab hold of it today with, with fresh excitement. 
and anticipation of what you're about to do. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's thank the Lord. Come on, let's thank him. Let's take 10 seconds to dismiss. These guys are going to play something as we go, but let's dismiss it. Yes, yes. Why don't we all stand up? Let's all stand up. A uh, couple things. If you uh, would like some prayer, there is a prayer team going to be over here in the corner. And we would love that you don't leave without prayer if you're looking for some prayer. Uh, next, if you're new here, there's a gift for you in the back. Please don't walk out of here without taking that gift. And last but not least, before you're dismissed, eight weeks. If this is your first time here, we encourage you, would you come for eight weeks? And you can count them down and you can say, oh man, when is we going to get here? I cannot wait to sleep in on a Sunday. That's okay. But would you come for eight weeks? Because we believe that the power of God is powerful enough to change lives. Not even in eight weeks, in one week. Would you come back next week? But we're doing an eight-week challenge. Uh, would you come for eight weeks and see what God can do in that time? And with that, God bless you. Have a fantastic day, and we love you, church.